Welcome to traditional worship here at Christ the King. I'm so glad you're with us it's visiting today. It's so good to have you in our company. Uh, if you would do us a favor, fill out that connection card, either that you find in your bulletin today, or you can go online to our website and do that. We really appreciate it. Today we begin the season of Advent, and the ad word Advent simply means arrival. This is a time when we pre prepare for the arrival of celebrating the original arrival of Jesus at Bethlehem, at Christmas time, but it's also a time we prepare our hearts for the second coming of Christ, which he promises to us. Today for adult faith formation, uh, we're going to have a continuation of a discussion of what's going to be in the sermon today. We're going to be looking at Romans 13, 1 through 9, and the appropriate role of the peacekeepers in our world during this time before the vision of peace is fulfilled. That'll be over in the chapel today at 10:15. Also, next week, you have two choices. You can go over to the adult uh, faith formation class and hear a presentation from Rodney Hill. He's our Thrivent representative. He's going to be talking about how to plan to leave a legacy gift uh, for your family and the organizations that you care about. That should be very interesting. That'll be next week, starting at 1015. And next week at 10 a.m. in the chapel is going to be the cottage meeting related to the 2023 church budget. So you can go either way you want to go uh, next week. Also be aware that we're going to be having a congregational meeting on the 11th, the week after that, between the services in the fellowship hall. Also, one last thing, there are many ways. You know, Christmas is about giving. Christmas uh, is about generosity. And our Compassion and Action team, along with the Compassion Projects, they have come up with a whole list. You probably noticed in your bulletin two sides of an insert about ways that you can be helpful and the ways you can give and be generous this Christmas and Advent season. So be sure to check that out. All right, let's stand together and begin our service with confession and forgiveness of sins. We begin in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. God of all mercy and consolation, come to the help of your people, turning us from our sin to live for you alone. Give us the power of your Holy Spirit that we may confess our sin, receive your forgiveness, and grow into the fullness of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Let us now confess our sin in the presence of God and one another. Please kneel or be seated. Gracious God, 
have mercy on us. We confess that we have turned from you and given ourselves into the power of sin. We are truly sorry and humbly repent. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things we have done and things we have failed to do. Turn us again to you and uphold us by your Spirit so that we may live and serve you in newness of life through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for his sake, God forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us stand and join in our opening hymn. grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord. 
for the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. Let us pray. Stir up your power, Lord Christ, and come. By your merciful protection, save us from the threatening dangers of our sins and enlighten our walk in the way of, our, of your salvation. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. <coughs> concerning Judah and Jerusalem. In days to come, the mountains of the Lord's house shall be established as the highest of the mountains and shall be raised above the hills. All the nations shall stream to it. Many people shall come and say, come, let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, to the house of the God of Jacob, that he may teach us his ways, that we, we may walk in his paths. For out of Zion shall come forth instructions, and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. He shall judge between the nations, and shall arbitrate for many people. They shall beat their swords into plowshares, and their spears into pruning hooks. Nations shall not lift up sword against nation, Neither shall they learn war any more. O house of Jacob, come, let us walk in the light of the Lord. The word of the Lord. Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 24th chapter. Jesus said to the disciples, About that day and hour no one knows, neither the angels of heaven nor the Son, but only the Father. For as the days of Noah were, so will be the coming of the Son of Man. For as in those days before the flood they were eating and drinking and marrying and giving in marriage until the day Noah entered the ark, 
and they knew nothing until the flood came and swept them all away. So too will be the coming of the Son of Man. Then two will be in the field, one will be taken and one will be left. Two women will be grinding meal together, one will be taken and one will be left. Keep awake, therefore, for you do not know on what day your Lord is coming. But remember this, if the owner of the house had known in what part of the night the thief was coming, he would have stayed awake and would not have let his house be broken into. Therefore, you also must be ready, for the Son of Man is coming at an unexpected hour. The Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. This time I invite our children forward for the children's time. Come on up and have a seat. You need to gather around me today because I got some pictures to show you, all right? Come on up. Hi, come on up. Yeah, well, you're going to see, you'll see them each when you get a chance. Let's take, oh, there's Ivor. Hi, come on up. Come on up. Hi, Minnie, I see your sweatshirt. Come on up here, Minnie. <laughs> all right, all right. Yeah. Now, I want to show you some pictures. No, we got to say our church day greeting first, right? Remember what it is? The Lord be with you and also with you. Let's try it together. Come on. The Lord be with you and also with you. All right, you guys are still asleep. Oh, it's okay. Now, I want to show you what a little boy's looking at. He's looking at a statue. Look at that statue. What's that statue made out of? Can you tell? It's made of metal. It's a big muffler from a truck. Isn't that something? So this statue's made out of a muffler and out of tailpipes. Isn't that something? So they made something out of something else. Now let's look at this one. What do we got here? Look at this. What is that? It's a toy car, right? It's a toy car. What's it made out of? It's made out of Coke cans, isn't it? Look at that. That's kind of neat. It's made out of Coke cans. Now this is really cute. What is this? Tell me what that is. That's a bunny. Take a look. That's a bunny. Isn't that a cute bunny? And what's it made out of? Can you tell? It's made out of metal. That's right. That's right. It's made out of, these are parts of a clock. Those are parts of an old clock that have been made into a, a little animal. Now look at this one. This is kind of cool. These are some planters. What are the planters made out of? What are the planters made out of? They're made out of old tires, right? They were painted. They look pretty now. They got flowers in them. And look at this. I thought this was pretty cool. Take a look at this. I thought this was pretty cool. What is that? That is like a little toy. It looks like a rocking horse. Be kind of like a rocking horse that you could have fun with. What's it made out of? Can you tell? It's made out of half of a what? Half of a tire. So really creative stuff. And we'll show you one more. What are these? These are garden what? Garden, garden tools. Look at this. Guess what these garden tools are made out of? Metal. Yeah, what kind of metal? They're made out of old weapons. They melted down the old weapons, and look what they made. They made garden tools out of them. And we learned that in our lesson today. We learned that someday, someday, all the swords are going to be turned into plowshares and the spears into pruning hooks. Pruning hooks help to take fruit off the trees. So all that's going to change. War's going to be over. Isn't that a good news to know that war someday is not going to be anymore? That's good news, isn't it? Because war hurts a lot of people, and it's good to hear that someday we won't have to worry about it. God's going to take it away, right? So do you remember what we say before we go on our way? I say, go in peace, serve the Lord, and you say, thanks be to God. Let's say it all together. Go in peace, serve the Lord. All right, thank you for coming up. Have a great day. Our Advent series this year is focused on the book of Isaiah. You know, a lot of the things you're going to sing, a lot of the things you're going to heard, say, heard said during the season of Advent are going to come from that prophetic school. And notice I said prophetic school because the book of Isaiah is the book of at least three prophets over more than 200 years. Today we're going to be dealing with the original Isaiah, son of Amos, known as First Isaiah. And the first thing you have to realize about a prophet is a prophet is not a fortune teller. A prophet is a truth teller. 
A prophet speaks a word from God to rulers and people of what God has in store and how their obedience or disobedience can shape their future. I want you to notice the first words of our lesson today. It says, the word that the, that the Isaiah son of Amos heard, or no, excuse me, saw, the word that he saw. Now, he wasn't looking at a book like we would. There were no books. He saw a vision from God of what would be. That vision that Isaiah is going to share with us is going to be both challenging and encouraging through this season. And it comes with an invitation that we join in that future now. Isaiah, son of Amos, was a prophet to the southern kingdom of Judah. And that's another thing you need to be aware of. You need to be aware at this point in the 8th century, you need to be aware that there were two kingdoms in the land of Jacob. There were two kingdoms. One was the northern kingdom called Israel with its capital in Samaria. The other was the southern kingdom called Judah with its capital, Jerusalem. And Isaiah, son of Amos, was a prophet to Israel the southern kingdom. And even though they were all part of the 12 tribes of Israel, they were in constant conflict, the Bible tells us. Isaiah's career began when King Uzziah died. Now, King Uzziah was a very strong king of the southern kingdom for over 50 years. And during his time, Judah had grown in strength and wealth. Unfortunately, though, in their wealth and prosperity, the people of Judah turned away from God They started trusting in their own wealth. They started to abuse the poor and to turn from the way of God. On the political front, the Neo-Assyrian Empire was ever-expanding, frightening countries with their brutality. They would force them to submit and to present tribute or be destroyed. And King Ahaz, in our lesson today, to whom Isaiah prophesied, found himself in a difficult position. You see, that northern kingdom of Israel we talked about, and another kingdom called Aram Damascus, decided that they were going to rebel against the king of Assyria. And they wanted King Ahaz of Judah to join in. Well, King Ahaz didn't want to do this. And when they found out that King Ahaz didn't want to do it, they were going to attack him because they wanted to replace him with another king, who would join their alliance. And it's into that frightening, intense situation that Isaiah was called. Do you remember his call from Isaiah chapter 6? Remember, he's looking on at the great majesty of the Lord in heaven, and what 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 do they say? Whom shall I send, God says. Remember what he says? Isaiah says, here am I, send me. Isaiah brought a message to King Ahaz not to be afraid and to trust God to defeat these two kingdoms that were arising against him. And we're going to talk in a few weeks about the sign of Emmanuel. Remember that name, God is with us? Well, the original purpose of that sign was to tell King Ahaz, God is with you. Don't be afraid. Don't give in. But unfortunately, unfortunately, King Ahaz, you might say, made a deal with the devil He reached out to the Assyrian Empire for protection. And it worked. It worked for a while. But it ruined the tradition of Judah and eventually led to its downfall. All because he wouldn't listen to the prophet. All because he would not trust in the power of God. You know, let's take a look at this portion of the book of Isaiah. This is the vision we have today. If you want to look in your hymnal, sometime, or in your Bible, excuse me, sometimes it's good to actually hold it in your hand. It's on page 618 if you want to look there in your pew Bible. Page 618, let's just go through this quickly. Verse 1, the word that Isaiah, son of Amos, saw, messed that up earlier, concerning Judah and Jerusalem. So concerning the southern kingdom and what? And its capital. So it's all about the southern kingdom. Here's the... The, the word that he saw, the vision. And here's how it goes. In days to come, notice that, not right now, in days to come, the mountain of the Lord's house in verse 2. Now, if you've ever been to the Holy Land, you know what's being talked about because the Temple Mount is lifted up, isn't it? There's valleys all the way around. And here's what it says. The, temp, the mountain of the Lord's house, in other words, the temple, shall be established as the highest of the mountains. That doesn't mean it's going to be taller than Everest. 
what it means is symbolically, it's going to be a place to which everyone goes. It's going to be like that city set on a hill that Jesus talks about in the New Testament. All the nations shall stream to it. And there, verse 3, many people shall come and say, let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, to the house of the God of Jacob. And there's another terminology, another term you need to know. Jacob refers to all of Israel. It refers to all 12 tribes. Remember, we talked about Israel. It's 10 of them. Judah's another two down to the south. Jacob refers to the entire people of God. So let's go up to the house of God, right? To the house of the 12 tribes, that he, God, may teach us his ways and that we may walk in his paths. Now, talk is cheap, isn't it? It's easy to learn something. Say, oh, yes, I learned that. It's another thing to live it. I found a cool story about Tony Campola. Do you know who that is? He's a sociologist, a Baptist preacher, and a well-known Christian writer. And he was once invited to a women's conference where he was given, uh, he was given the role of presenting the keynote address. These women were being challenged to raise several thousand dollars for a mission project goal. While Campola was sitting by the podium, the chairperson turned to him and asked him if he would pray for God's blessing as they considered their individual responses to the goal. Campola stood, and to the utter amazement of everyone present, he graciously said no. He approached the microphone and said this, you already have all the resources necessary to complete this mission project right here within this room. It would be inappropriate to ask for God's blessing when in fact God had already blessed you with the abundance and means to achieve this goal. It almost sounds like a mic drop moment, doesn't it? Yeah, so getting back to this, so they need to follow through. For out of Zion shall go forth instruction and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. And then look at, look at verse 4. He shall judge between the nations. He shall arbitrate for many peoples. That word arbitrate is interesting. It's a Latin word that originally means to judge, sure, but it also means to be the supreme ruler. So there's going to be a judge who's the supreme ruler, the arbiter, and here's going to be his judgment. We're told in advance. It's not could be, should be, it's they shall. Listen to this. They shall beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. Do you know what a plowshare is? You know what that is? I thought it was just plow. It's not. It's the blade on the bottom of the plow. Think about this. The blade of the sword that was used to cut into a human being in violence will now be the blade that cuts into the earth to make room for planting and new growth. Isn't that a cool image? You know, you can think of a choir saying, oh, happy day. You know, no longer will there be widows and widowers from war. No longer will mothers and fathers offer up their young, precious kids to the slaughter. He goes on, nation shall not lift up sword against nation. Shall they learn war anymore? Why not? Because they won't need to. God will be in control. God will be the arbiter of the people. You know, anyone who thinks that war is a great thing has probably never been in a combat zone. I mean, war sounds good in theory, but it's pretty ugly in person. General William Tecumseh Sherman, who burned Atlanta, remember over 3,000 structures during the Confederate War, on his way out in his march, his nasty march out to the sea, was quoted as saying that war is hell, Right? Then there was a Confederate general on the other side, General Nathan Bedford Forrest, who said this. He said, war means fighting, and fighting means killing. That's pretty stark. But before you peg me as a pacifist, war in this sinful world is sometimes a necessary evil. Sometimes it's precisely love that drives us to take up arms. When I was preparing to go over to Iraq with Task Force 323, we got a visit from Lieutenant Colonel David Grossman. Lieutenant Colonel Grossman had written a book about a warrior's mindset. And he talked about the difference between a wolf and a sheepdog. He said essentially they have the same equipment. They have sharp teeth. They're muscular and they can be fierce. 
He said the difference is how they use that equipment. A wolf uses that equipment to destroy and to tear and to scatter the flock. A sheepdog uses that same fierce equipment to protect, defend, and to keep the flock together. He said to the guys, he said, remember, you are the sheepdogs, not the wolves. That's important to remember. Sometimes it's necessary in an evil world, but Isaiah focuses on a day when all war will end. And when will that be? When God is fully in control of hearts and minds. It will happen. That's God's promise. You know, as we begin the season of Advent, we place our hope in that future. We look to the coming Prince of Peace. You know, that's a term that was coined by Isaiah in chapter 9, verse 6. We look to him in two ways. First of all, him coming as a babe in Bethlehem. Remember that? Born into the world, God with us. Coming here to plan an outpost of heaven called his church. A place that would embody and teach the way of peace. Also, secondly, Jesus promised to return someday to finish off the battle against Satan. We are promised someday that every knee shall bend and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. In the meantime, in the meantime, we live as signs of that coming reign of peace. We live that in our personal and our communal life. As much as it depends on you, Paul says in Romans chapter 12, live at peace with everyone. We are to live as the first fruits of the peace that will someday engulf the earth. So, What are some practical ways that we can be peacemakers? Number one, we can set pride aside. Pride is one of the main causes of conflict, one of the main causes of violence. We need to see that we're all in the same boat as human beings. Secondly, we can support and sometimes prophesy to the appointed peacekeepers in this sinful age. And I mean the military and the police never letting them forget what their role actually is, to protect and defend, never to abuse. If you want to hear and talk more about this, we'll be gathering over in the chapel to discuss that passage, Romans 13. And third, we can be peace trailblazers. Do you know what a blaze is when it comes to hiking? A blaze is a mark on a tree. Usually it's a nice bright color on the tree to let you know you're on the right path so you don't get lost. A trailblazer is someone who goes along and sets those blazes, marks them on the tree. They're the one who sets the path so that others can follow it later. Following Christ, empowered by the Holy Spirit, we find paths to peace. And then finally in verse 5 it ends off, O house of Jacob, who's Jacob? All 12 tribes, right? O house of Jacob, people of God, people of Christ the King, come let us walk in the light of the Lord. That's what the prophet Isaiah is calling Ahaz to today. And our times are just as confusing. Our times are just as frightening. And yet, what do we do? We see that vision of peace, and we trust God's power to bring it about, living the way he wants us to live as trailblazers of peace, until that day when all conflict shall end. Amen.
As God's people living together in trust and hope, let us profess our faith. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Please be seated or kneel for prayers. <clears throat> Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. God of all, your children everywhere cry out for mercy. Awaken the global church to the urgent needs of our time. Break down barriers of culture and customs and unite people of all faiths in your redemptive and healing work. Lord, in your mercy. God of wonder, the earth's beauty and abundance is your gift. Teach us your ways of sharing resources and caring for life. Guard fragile habitats, preserve the wild places,
God of all creation, all you have made is good, and your love endures forever. You bring forth bread from the earth and fruit from the vine. Nourish us with these gifts that we might be for the world, signs of your gracious presence in Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior, Jesus Christ. You comforted your people with the promise of the Redeemer, through whom you will also make all things new in the day when he comes to judge the world in righteousness. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the host of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people, for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated.
body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Amen. ourselves away as bread for the hungry, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Amen. peace. Serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.